this is a familiar scene. Tourists who have lost their way. At one time or another, most of us have found ourselves in this predicament. And like these men, probably stopped at a service station to ask directions. Generally, such directions are given by reference to a road map. This is what is known as a planimetric map and shows only the horizontal features. Like all other maps, this is a drawing to scale of a portion of the Earth's surface on which natural and man-made features are depicted by symbols, lines and colors. If you select a map which covers the area of your travels and know how to interpret the information it contains, the planimetric map will guide you to your destination. This is the purpose of any map. For these travelers, the relatively simple road map serves this purpose, enabling them to visualize the route they must travel to reach their destination. In other situations, this type of map would be of no value at all. Here, a soldier's mission takes him miles from the nearest improved road to make his way across country by referring to natural signposts such as hills, mountains or streams, or man-made features like houses, schools or water towers. There are no road signs here, and to plan and complete a trip or patrol requires much more information than would be found on a simple road map. So the soldier is issued a topographic map, which shows both relief and horizontal position of features, natural and man-made, in measurable form. However, no map is of value unless it is properly understood and used. At first glance, it may appear confusing, with all sorts of lines and symbols you have never before encountered. All have a purpose, and it becomes obvious that the first step in learning to read a map lies in discovering what these various symbols, lines, and colors represent. First, let us note what might be called the operating instructions. These are placed around the map edges and termed marginal information. This contains such essential information as the scale to which the map is drawn. Graphic or bar scales to be used in translating map distances into actual ground distances and the contour interval or vertical distance represented by contour lines on the map. The lower left hand corner contains the legend which illustrates and identifies the symbols used on the map. It might be possible to interpret the information found on a military map by continually referring to the legend for the meaning of the map's symbols. But this is awkward, so for speed and efficiency in map reading, the first requirement is to learn and memorize the more common symbols. Let us begin with the symbols printed in black and identify what is called cultural detail or man-made objects. These resemble, insofar as possible, the actual object's features as viewed from above. In almost any area, the most conspicuous man-made objects are highways. They come in various widths. If classed as hard surface, heavy-duty roads like these, they are represented on the military map by parallel lines. This is the basic symbol for a road, two parallel lines. A hard surface heavy duty road is indicated by coloring the space between the lines solid red. If the road is more than two lanes wide, its width is printed on the map above it. Where the road changes in width, a tick mark is placed at the point of change and the variation is noted. Reading this symbol then, we see a road indicated by parallel lines. We also note that it is classed as hard surface, heavy duty, by the red marking. Here it is four lanes, but at this point it widens to six. 
Other types of roads are shown by varying this basic symbol. For example, this is a hard surface medium duty road, as is this and this. These roads, like the ones we saw before, may vary in width, but their map symbol is the same, parallel lines. A hard surface medium duty road is depicted by alternating red and white sections between the parallel lines. Its width and variations are marked in the same manner as the heavy duty road. Military maps also include streets like this one, as well as improved light-duty roads. The symbol for improved light-duty roads and streets is again parallel lines. But for this classification, only the two parallel lines are used. No color code is added. Unimproved dirt roads are indicated by parallel, broken lines on the military map. Important trails, footpaths, or pack trails are shown by a single broken line. Thus it is evident that five different types of roads are depicted on military maps by distinctive individual symbols. A trail an unimproved dirt road, an improved light-duty road, a hard surface medium-duty road, and a hard surface heavy-duty road. The width of hard surface roads, if more than two lanes, is indicated above them, like this, and all five symbols stand out clearly and distinctly. Another feature commonly seen is the overpass or bridge. This symbol is used with the symbols for railroads, highways, and streams. Still another transportation facility found on most military maps is the railroad. Its symbol is simple and logical. For a single track, one line is used with cross marks suggesting railroad ties. For more than one track, the symbol is two parallel lines with the same crossbars. The difference between the single track and the multiple track symbols is obvious, and both are designed to stand out clearly from other map details. The next symbols we shall learn represent buildings, not to scale, but rather to suggest their shapes as viewed from above. For example, a house is represented by a solid black square, which is centered on the map on its actual location, as are all map symbols. A barn or similar outbuilding is depicted by an open square. The symbol for a school derives from the flag, which is flown on school property. So a school is represented by a black square with a flag on top. The church symbol is similar, except that a cross is placed on the black square instead of a flag. Larger buildings are usually depicted on maps by symbols which suggest...